Whether you like it or not, forward-facing sonar is here to stay. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of the things that I have learned after putting more than 10,000 hours into my unit, into fishing. What's going on guys? I'm Steven Turner with Turner Fishing. Welcome or welcome to the channel. Now, everything about crappy fishing is right here. So if you love crappy fishing, be sure to join the Turner fam down below. But let's dive right into today's video. So the unit I use is an Echo Map 7. Uh, it's the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest one that you can, money can buy that is able to be used with live scope. And I've accumulated probably way more than 10,000 hours. I mean, I fish probably 250 days out of the year. It, it's not that hard to get that many hours on one unit. But I have the LVS 32 for reference. That's my most experience. I have used the 34 a pretty good bit probably i don't even know how many hours on that one and i've also got a pretty good experience with active target also so everything just comes from experience and that's the one thing i want to get out on this video just some cool fun things that you learn that could help you and you know you don't have to put all the time to be like oh man that's they actually do that so that's the whole point of today's video we're going to dive right in so if you're out there open water fishing, one of the first cool things I've learned using forward facing sonar, a lot of people think when you find a fish, say you see a fish out at 30 to 40 feet, you know, a nice size crappy pound and a half, two and a half pounder. You start going towards this fish, you know, when you first get up to him, you make that a first initial cast or initial drop. A lot of people think the crappy head is the other way. But in reality, that crappy already knows your boat's there. And what I mean by that, when you first drop, if you will notice, like if you're using a 13 foot rod like I like to use, when you get that fish into that 15 foot sweet spot and you drop that bait over his head, he's not gonna bite it on the right side of the screen. He's gonna bite it on the left side of the screen, which means that fish knows that boat's there. That bait goes over his head. He forgets about the boat because he's got a little teeny ass bang. Ugh. He forgets about the boat because he got a little brain and he bites your lure. So that fish is already aware that you're there. So the next thing, biggest myth of crappy fishing. Crappy won't feed down and that is complete bull crap. I don't know how many times I've thrown a, a real light 164, 132 ounce jig. They'll follow it down and eat it. Point blank simple. I mean, I, I, don't, even, I don't have anything else to say about that. <laughs> oh, got me a little list right here, by the way. Just so I, I don't, you know, I like to ramble in my videos like I am right now. Um, one, of the, one of the things that people don't realize with forward facing sonar is the sun the reflection of light, pretty much, actually affects the size of fish on your screen. You know, real early in the morning, you catch a pound and a half, two pounder, you're like, all right, I'm dialed in. I know what size they are. They look like this right here. Two, three hours go by, the sun gets up, you see one that looks like this, and you catch it, and it's probably like a pound and a quarter. You're like, dang, that fish looked like a daggum giant. But in reality, if you got bluebird skies and the sun's out, the, the picture of the fish is gonna be brighter, thus making them look bigger. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory there, but still a pretty cool thing that not a lot of people are aware of. So if you're starting to catch smaller ones, just look for a really, really big one. <laughs> now, another cool thing that you kind of figure out, like back in the day, I say back in the day, probably like six years ago, you're side scanning, you see a brush that's got, I don't know, 30, 40 crappy on it. You spin the boat around and you down scan it and you're like, dang, there wasn't that many on there. And what in reality, what's happening is once, in my experience, I don't know if they do it when they're smaller, but in my experience, the real 13 plus inchers school up and they run in wolf packs 
you know, time and time again, I'm fishing a brush. There'll be a, a school of really good ones that leave the brush. All right. Three, four minutes go by, that school will come back. And if you have other brush piles in that 10 foot area, give or take, they'll actually go from brush pile to brush pile to brush pile. And those are the easiest fish in the lake to catch too. Because that when they're in that wolf pack, if you can get a bait above them, they're gonna fight over it and they're gonna knock the crap out of it. So look for that if you're out there scoping. Another one of the coolest things that you that I've learned over the course of three years, crappy are more like a largemouth spotted smallmouth bass than people realize. And what I mean by that is sometimes if you're fishing a big fish out in open water and they don't immediately eat, you can get that fish to eat by aggravating him. Much like bass fishing using a jerk bait, a uh, crank bait, a uh, spinner bait, chatter bait. There's a core instinct in crappy just like bass that if you piss them off, they bite. So basically crappy can be caught with reaction baits. I've been wanting to do a video about throwing the jerk bait for crappy. I haven't done it yet. Jerk baits in my little boat are really hard to do. I need a deck to be able to do it right. But we're going to get there in the next couple years, I hope, and be able to record my live scope too because I can't do that yet. Anyways, <clears throat> one of the other things you learn too is if you're fishing 5 to 15 foot, you will run off more fish than you're aware of. So if I'm ever fishing really shallow, I like to start off casting 30 to 40 foot because they're more likely to run in that depth range. Now, once you get around 20, 25 feet, they kind of don't really care about the boat too much. They know you're there, but they're down so far that it's kind of like they're more comfortable with just staying put especially in muddy water. Muddy water is the best water to live scope, period. If you have just been like, man, the water's so dang muddy, I don't wanna go out there, there ain't nothing gonna bite. I shouldn't even be sharing this on this video. Muddy water is giant heaven. These fish don't move at all. They are like, you took a bunch of marbles and put in your hand, you threw out in the yard, and you just go out there and pick them up. Big crappy and muddy water, they just be there. Point blank period, it's weird. You would have never found them fish with down scan, side scan. You might have picked up a couple trolling, but who's really gonna be trolling in muddy water? Next time you're late and get super muddy, go out there, get you a 10, the 10 to 16 foot rod, find a big old blob and drop something on his head, and that sucker gone going to chomp. And speaking of chomping, probably the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video. If this video does good, I mean, I want to get out in the water and actually show you guys things. I really want to get a unit that can record uh, with Active Captain. Man, I could teach y'all so much if I ever get one of those. But fish will bite more than once. And I would have never thought that. I chased a fish last year in the river that I thought was two pounds, but he ended up being like a pound 70. Still a good fish, but it was on one of my videos. That fish bit three times before I got him. He bit, I said into him, hooked him. He bent the hook. I retied. <clears throat> That's why I don't use braid anymore because I kept bending, bending hooks, but I retied. Went after him again, he bit, I missed him. Went after him again, and finally stuck him on the third bite. Unreal. Not every fish does this though, so take it with a grain of salt. But if you do miss a fish, you can chase that fish down. They will go, you know, 30, 40 yards and then stop. 
and they may run from the boat but eventually they're gonna be like man stop following me and you'll be able to get another chance at them so don't give up if you miss one anyway guys like the video if you know this was enjoyable i'm just trying to get out new new forms of content there's only so much you can teach in a short limited amount of time and i gotta expand to grow this channel so that's what i'm trying to do so like the video comment down below if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't i don't know if we're at 10,000 yet but if we are i thank each and every one of you thank y'all for ordering some jigs at craftmanjigs.com you keep me and my family fed and i appreciate every single one of you. Hee <laughs> hee.